So in this video lecture, we're going to talk about how to solve an initial value problem using a Laplace transform. Okay, so the first thing uh, that we need to do is to, uh, I'm going to show you how to take the Laplace transform of the uh, first order differential. Once we do that, then we can take the Laplace transform of a second order differential. Okay? So let's first define that um, in our theorem. So suppose, suppose that F is continuous on the, let's say on this interval from zero to infinity. And that we also need the requirement that the derivative of F is Continuous. On that same interval. Okay. Then F and F prime have Laplace transforms. And it turns out that the Laplace transform of F prime is equal to S. Remember that S is uh, basically are going from the time domain to the space S being the space, the spatial domain. So we have the S times the Laplace of F times, sorry, minus F of zero. So let's, this is really so important in what we're going to do, uh, specifically when we get ready to, uh, to apply this, when we get ready to apply the Laplace transform to a uh, first to a um, initial value problem. Okay, so let's prove this result. So let's do that over here. All right, let's start here actually. Okay, so we need to first, basically, right, we use the definition of the Laplace transform, right? So we need to show, okay, we do here, I want to show that this, we want to show that this is equal to this. Well, to do that, we have to apply the definition of the Laplace transform. So that's going to be, right, we have the improper integral right, from zero to infinity, e to the minus st. And this is what we're transforming, right? So this is gonna, this function is gonna get multiplied by f prime. And I'll put this t in here, show that where we are working in terms of the time domain. Okay, so now uh, we have to basically apply integration by parts, right? Or in other words, the product rule for, uh, for integration, okay? Okay, so let's do that. All right, so we want to do this, we wanna let you, okay, we wanna let you be equal to e to the minus st and du, we want to let this be equal to f prime of t. Okay? The reason is, well, in order to get, sorry, this would be dv. Um, in order to get v, then we just have to take the integral of this. Okay, so du, so du is going to be minus s times e to the minus st. And over here, uh, the integral of dv will give us v, which is going to be equal to, we undo this, so that's going to be f of t. I should put in dt here. Okay. So that's just using the, uh, the product rule for integration, aka um, integration by parts. Okay. All right. So let's work on this now. 
Okay, so we end up getting, okay, f of t times e to the minus s t, so u times v, okay, and then we have minus the integral of the product of these two, so that's going to give us plus the integral from zero to infinity of s times e to the minus s t times f of t. All right. All right, so we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Uh, we can go ahead and take out the S here. Okay. All right. Now we go ahead and take the limit of this. Right, we're going to change right because of this uh, improper integral. We need to change this over. So let's do that here. So we want the upper bound, right? Again, we want the upper bound to go to infinity. So we let the, we take the limit of all this. As B goes to infinity. Okay, so let's leave this one as it is. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and um, take care of this first part. All right, so from here, okay, we have the limit as B approaches infinity for this part, okay, and then over here, we have the limit as B approaches infinity, so I'm just distributing the limits here. So we'll leave this one as it is for a moment. Okay, and we need to okay, remember that we need to evaluate this from zero to B. So let's put that into here. Okay, All right, because again, this was the original integral that we're working on. So basically substituting this in, okay, we have F of B times E to the minus S times B minus, so we have f of zero times e of zero, and then plus this part. Okay, um, yeah, so. Okay, there it is. All right, that looks better. Okay, so, all right, so what's gonna happen here is that, okay, right here, we're letting B approach infinity. So this E to the minus S times B, this part right here is gonna go to zero. Okay. And we're assuming, again, we're assuming that S is strictly bigger than zero. This is an assumption that we, uh, that we make when working with Laplace transforms. Okay, so just, let's just take note of that. So this term is gonna to go to zero as B approaches infinity. And this term right here, well, that's just, okay. So it, that's going, so this is going to zero. And so that's gonna make everything zero there. Okay. So now we're left with, okay. So basically, we're left with minus f of zero times one, right? And then right here, the s, we can take the s outside the limit because s is just a constant. Okay, and this, this is just the Laplace transform of 
of whatever this function is, this function of p. So we have a result. Okay, so we have minus f of zero plus s times the Laplace of f of t. All right, so that gives us, so basically that this result gives us the Laplace of f prime. Which is really nice, okay? Because now we using this, we can work with different equations. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's put that aside for a moment. We're gonna we're gonna utilize this a little bit later on in one of the examples. Okay. So now let's figure out. Well, I guess it sh I should say um, it turns out that you can take the Laplace transform of of the second order differential. Okay, so which is what we're going to do next. All right, let's do that. Um, let's do that here. Okay, continuing from here, okay. Uh, the same conditions. Okay. Suppose that F is, so in this case, suppose that F and F prime is continuous. Okay, so suppose that F and F prime are continuous on our interval. Okay, again, that is, we're on our, uh, we're on the uh, time domain here. Okay. And then we have that F double prime is continuous on this interval. Then it turns out that F, F prime, and F double prime have Laplace transforms. Meaning that they exist. Okay. All right, so it turns out that the Laplace of F, which is what we proved last time, was this. And sorry, the Laplace of F prime, and then the Laplace of F double prime is going to be equal to S squared times the Laplace of F minus F prime of zero minus S times F of zero. So this is basically, we proved this already from over there, and then we wanna prove this part now, okay? So let's call this equation one, and I'll call this equation two. All right, so, all right, what we can do here, okay, for the proof of this, we're going to let, B be equal to F prime. Then we can use the previous result, right? 
and apply the previous theorem. Okay, so Laplace of G prime, okay, and the Laplace of G prime, okay, is going to be equal to S times the Laplace of G minus G of zero. Again, that's just applying our rule, except in this case, we're using the function G, okay. All right, so now, since, okay, so since G is equal to F prime, then G prime is gonna be equal to F double prime. So just take the derivative of both of these. Right? And then we replace, then from there, okay, we're gonna end up getting Laplace. So what is G prime? G prime is F double prime, right? Okay, and then this is equal to S times the Laplace of, of G, okay, which is equal to F prime minus F prime of zero. Okay, so all we did is just a play, just play, just a uh, basically just work with the variables here. Uh, we're letting G be equal to F prime, okay? And then we said that the Laplace of G prime is equal to this. This is what we proved previously. And since G is equal to F prime, then therefore G prime equals F double prime, right? So then we take the Laplace of F double prime, okay? Because uh, G prime is equal to F prime. So we just substitute this and substitute F double prime into here. So that's gonna be equal to S times the Laplace of G. G was F prime minus g of zero, and g was f prime of zero. So that's what we get. Now, okay, we're going to take, so basically now we're going to take, we're going to substitute one into here, right? So we have the, we basically have the Laplace of this. All right, so let's do that here. So the Laplace of F prime, we're going to substitute. Okay, it's going to give us this. Minus. Oops. I want to close the parentheses out here. So minus F of zero. And then minus F prime of zero. All right, so we're pretty much there, okay? We just need to simplify a little bit more. Probably you can already see the result from here. Okay, so Laplace of F double prime is going to be S squared times the Laplace of F minus S of zero, okay? And then minus F prime of zero. Now, just for a moment here. So these, um, F of zero and F prime of zero, those are actually going to be, um, that information is going to come directly from the initial values in the, in the, um, in the um, initial value problem that we're, gonna, that we're gonna look at, okay? So here's our results, okay? And then we can just basically here, just rearrange this. Okay. So this is just S squared times Laplace of F minus F prime of zero. Minus S times F of zero, okay? So traditionally, this is how they write it, okay? Right. Okay, so there's, there's our result, okay? And we can extend on this. We can do this for, uh, we can do this for third order, for fourth order, and so on. All right. In fact, in the table of Laplace transforms, 
um, they they have they will most likely have um, the one I showed last time. They will have actually they'll have it there at the bottom of the page. They have the um, the general um, Laplace of they have the general definition or the general formula for the Laplace of f of, to whatever order it is. Okay, um, but basically these are the um, these are the ones that we're going to utilize. Okay. So let's see how this works. Okay, so we'll start on a little, we'll start on a, a small problem and then we'll do something a little bit more complicated after that. So let's look at our first example here. So let's say we want to solve y prime equals to ay. given that y of zero is equal to uh, y of naught, okay? So again, we expect this solution to be in the form of some exponential function, right? Um, simply because um, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, okay? So we're gonna have forms. So basically, we're gonna have some form of that. So we wanna solve this using, using a Laplace transform. Okay, so the so the general idea is this: what we're going to do, the overall methodology for solving this, is that we're going to take the Laplace of both sides. Okay, um, that's going to take us from the basically from the time domain to the s domain, right? Okay, and then we're going to basically um, formulate everything and then use the Laplace inverse. To convert everything back into the original um, time domain. Okay. And that will give us our solution. Okay. All right. So, uh, so let's first let's take the Laplace, both sides here. By the way, A is a constant here. So we can go ahead and apply apply the formula right that we just derived for Laplace of y prime. Okay, so we're going to get s. So using this one, right? So we have s times the Laplace of y minus y of zero okay, equals to a times. We can take out the constant a because the Laplace operator operator is linear. So it's going to give us a times the Laplace of y. Okay. okay, so now when we take the Laplace of y, remember that's going, that's taking this function, y, y. So y here is in terms of t. So it's going to convert that into some to a function of s. So let's denote that by y of s. And so this becomes y of s okay. minus y of zero. Okay, so y evaluate zero. Well, that's just y not. Okay, this is y not equals to a times again. So the plus of y is going to be y of s. So y is right. So y in terms of our space domain. So now everything is in terms of S, right? After taking the Laplace transform, okay? But now the goal here is to um, isolate Y of S. And then we're going to apply the inverse of Laplace transform, okay? Um, so, okay, so Y of S is going to be equal to, right? We have Y naught, we just move that over, okay? And then, Right, so I can back up a step here for a moment just to show you. So this is going to be S times Y of S minus A times Y of S. A, Y of S equals to Y naught. Okay, so then Y of S, you have S minus A 
equals to y dot. So this is going to be y dot all divided by s minus a. Okay, so now we have a representation for this, right? Okay. So we apply, uh, basically apply the, over here, apply the, um, or take, sorry, take the Laplace inverse of both sides. Because we want to, remember, we want to go back into the original domain, to the original time domain, okay? All right, so... So the Laplace inverse of y of s, that's simply just going to be y. Okay? And I'll go and just put, just to emphasize that we're back in a t domain, okay? All right. And then we take the Laplace inverse of this. Okay, so y not is constant. We have Laplace, sorry, Laplace inverse of one over s minus a. So this we talked about last time, right? Um, that turns, if you look on a table, right? Or you can actually, um, if you recall, that's just e to the at, where a is a constant. So you have y naught times e to the at. And there's our, right, there's our solution as we expected. So, So a very nice technique, actually. So what we did, you take, again, just a three-step process, right? You take the Laplace transform, okay, of both sides, okay? Um, that's, you're going from the time domain to the S domain. And then you figure out, you basically you have to isolate Y of S, okay? And then apply the inverse, or, sorry, apply the Laplace inverse of both sides. Okay, and we end up getting our solution. So yeah, so this is a very, really, really nice technique actually. All right, let's look at something a little more involved. So the second example. And I'm going to start on this side. So let's say, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, let's say we want to solve this now. Use Laplace, right? Uh, use, use the Laplace transform, and I'll abbreviate that to solve this equation, this second order now. So we have y double prime minus 6y prime plus five times y equal to three times e to the t. So since it's second order, that means we have to have, um, we have to have information about the, um, the first initial value. And then we have to have information for the, um, for the second one. So y prime of zero is equal to three. All right. So, okay, we have, right, uh, we have the, we have to take the, first thing is we have to take the Laplace transform of both sides, okay? Which means that we can take, right, we take a Laplace of this side and this side, so we can, 
we can split things up because again, the Laplace operator is linear. Okay, so I'm taking the plus of each term. And then um, we need to we need to apply the um, the Laplace of the second order. Okay. In fact, that's before we do that, we can further write this. We have the Laplace of y double prime. We can go ahead and take out the minus six again because the Laplace is a linear operator. And we have plus five times the Laplace of y. And then we have three times the Laplace of e to the 2t. Okay. So we need to, right, we need to figure these out, which, well, we can do that because we just derived those components. So let's do that on the side here. Okay. Do that here. So the Laplace of, so looking at the Laplace of this one. So we're going to have <clears throat> so again, this is going to be S squared times the Laplace. So basically using this definition. So Laplace of F, I'm already going to, I'm going to change that over. That's just going to be Y of S minus Y uh, prime of zero. Minus S times Y of zero. Okay, so let's work on that. So this is basically, we're gonna get, so we have Laplace of Y double prime. It's going to be S squared times Y of S minus Y prime of zero is three. Okay. It's coming from here. And then we have S times Y of zero. So, so this is going to become two. So we have minus two S. Okay. So let's do, uh, let's look at a little plus of Y prime. Again, using the definition that we applied or that we derived earlier. So we have S times, we take the Laplace of F, which is Y of S, okay, minus Y of zero. So we have F of zero, remember that was F of zero. So when we take the Laplace of that, that becomes Y of zero, okay. So that's gonna give us S times Y of S, minus y of zero is, is two, okay. All right. Okay, all right. So again, this is just coming directly from the of the definition right, of Laplace Y of the first order and the Laplace of the second order. Okay. So we've already, so basically I've already converted it into, into, um, into the S domain. So these, these are gonna go into here. So this is gonna go into here. And then this one, Going to go into here. Okay, so let's write that out. Okay, so we have y double prime, which is going to be replaced by this. Okay, so we have s squared y of s minus 3 minus 2s. Again, that's Coming from here directly, just equal to y double prime 
or I should say the Laplace of y double prime, take minus six times. So we have we have to distribute this six into here. So it's going to be minus six s y of s plus twelve. Okay, plus we take the plus of y, so that's going to be plus five times y of s. And then we have to take the Laplace of e to the 2t. So that's, and then we have a three here. So this is going to be equal to three over s plus, or sorry, s minus t. Because there's a positive two there. Okay. So everything now is in terms of s, in terms of our space, uh, spatial domain. Okay, now the next thing is to, just like we did in the previous example, um, is to gather up, right, is to basically solve for y of s. All right, so we have, we have y of s here, here, and here. So let's go and factor that out. Okay, and then, on the other side, we're going to get three over s minus two um, plus. So we have um, let's see, three plus two s. Okay, so we move these on the other side, and then the twelve. Right, move that over here. Okay. All right. So now, ideally, what we need to do is put everything over, uh, we want to put everything over s minus two. Right? And let's, well, we can also, let's, so let's go ahead and combine this. So this is going to be s squared minus six s plus five times y of s equals to e over s minus two. And then we have uh, plus two s minus nine. Okay. okay, so we need to basically multiply this by S minus two top and bottom. So a little bit of algebra here. All right, so now we can put everything over s minus two on the on this right hand side. Okay. And then divide, uh, we can go ahead and divide by um, whatever this is. So we can factor that. Um, so this turns out to be S minus five times S minus one. Okay. Again, the goal here is to isolate y of s. So we have three plus two s minus nine times s minus two, and then divide by, right, we have s minus two times s minus five times s minus one. So basically dividing by this on both sides. So now we have y of s equals to um, a function of s here. Okay, so this is where we use, right? We're gonna we're gonna use the Heaviside method. So this looks like a problem that we did um, 
in the previous video. Okay, so now we're using that here. Okay, so we need to take the Laplace inverse of both sides. Right? Uh, but first, we need to separate these. Okay. So let's do that over here. Okay. Let's go back over here. All right, so uh, we have right, we have three, basically three distinct linear factors here. Okay, so we're going to apply the heavy side method. We're going to have okay. Um, let's do this here. We have A over S minus two, B over S minus five, plus C over S minus one. Okay, remember the way to solve this is that you, um, right, we're going to solve for A, B, and C. So to solve, for, to solve for A, you let S be equal to whatever makes that zero. So in this case, let S be equal to two, and then you substitute um, two into everywhere else, and then simplify it. And that will give us the value for A. Okay. All right, so let's start that. Okay, so when we let S be equal to two, and you plug everything into there, so this is going to be on the top part, we get three plus five times zero divided by negative three times one. Again, you don't. We don't want to use this term. Obviously, they'll make zero, they'll put a zero in the denominator. Okay. All right. So simplifying this, we get minus one. So therefore, this tells us A must be equal to negative one. Okay. okay. Now to solve for B, we let S be equal to five. We plug five every we plug five into there. Okay, so we're gonna get three plus um, but s is five, we get 10 minus nine, which is one, and then times three. And then divided by so three times four. So that's gonna give us six over twelve, which is one half. That turns out to be B. Okay, last one, we let S be equal to one. So you're gonna get three plus um, putting into the numerator there. Okay, so we're gonna get seven, okay, actually uh, negative seven times negative one divided by negative one times four. So we get negative four here, when S is one, and then here we get negative one. Okay. So it'll be negative four. Okay, simplifying that. Okay, we're gonna end up getting 10 over uh, 10 over four, which is gonna give us five halves, which is gonna give us C. Okay, there's our, so basically there's our coefficients. Okay. We have A equal to minus one, B equals to one half, and then C is equal to five halves. And that's using, again, that's using the technique called the heavy side map, which is discussed in the previous, uh, previous video, okay? So now we're ready to, ready to uh, roll on here. Yeah, these, these kind of problems get very long, especially with the algebra. Okay. So we have 
uh, y basically a y of s now equal to minus one over s minus two, okay, uh, plus one half over s minus five. And then C is five halves. Over S minus one. Okay, so plugging those back into here, and that was that is for Y of S. So now we can take the Laplace inverse of both sides. Okay, so going back to the right, so this will convert back into our original time domain. We get a function of t. Okay, y is a function of t here. And then um, remember that negative, this negative is a constant. So, so we're going to end up with uh, e to the, or minus e to the uh, 2t, positive, yeah, positive 2t. This is going to be one half e to the five t, okay? and this is going to give us this part will be five halves e to the uh, positive t. So there's our there's our solution. Okay. 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 Let's do, let's do one more here. Okay, okay so I use the Laplace transform. Um, to solve this initial value problem. Okay, where y of zero is equal to minus four and y prime of zero is equal to two. Okay, so the first thing is to take the Laplace transform of each term. Okay. So I'll go ahead and take out the two here. Factor out the three. Okay, we have Laplace of y, and then we take the Laplace of, I'll go ahead and take out the eight there. So eight times the Laplace of e to the minus two t. Okay, there's the setup, okay. Now, going back to the definition, right, we can figure out, we can apply our definition for the Laplace of y double prime and apply the definition for the Laplace of y prime. So let's go ahead and do that here. Again, remember, it's S squared times the Laplace of, of y, right? So the plus of y, um, okay, that's just the plus of, sorry, the plus of, um, we're calling that, yeah, the plus of y, which is I'm denoting, when we take the Laplace of it, we get y of s. So this becomes a function of s. So I'm already converting that here. And then we have uh, y prime of zero, okay, uh, minus s y of zero. Okay. 
Okay. Again, that's coming directly from the definition. Okay, so we have S squared times Y of S minus Y prime of zero. Well, that's given in the problem. That's two, okay? Y prime of zero is equal to two, and then Y of zero is negative four. So this is gonna become plus four S. All right, let's do the same thing for the first order. So it's also y prime, right? This is going to be by definition s times y of s minus y of zero. Again, this is going to be y, uh, sorry, s times y of s, and y of zero is just four. We're going to get plus four here. Okay, again, so we're going to substitute those. Take this, substitute it in for this one. And then we have the other one here. Substitute that into here. We have two times, right? Because we're multiplying this, right? multiplying this by two here. So that's going to give us two times s squared y of s minus four plus eight s. And then we have plus three times the Laplace of y prime. So that's going to be three times s times y of s plus 12 equals to we take the Laplace of e to the minus 2t, that is simply going to be, we're going to get 8 over 1, 1 plus, um, sorry, s plus 2. Okay. Because it's negative 2 here, so that has to be positive. Okay. S minus a, or a is 2. Okay, uh, let's see. Make sure everything is good here. All right, now the next thing is to, right, the next thing is to uh, go ahead and um, solve for Y of S. Okay. Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot the uh, this one, Laplace of y here. So let me put that back in. Sorry. We have Laplace of y. That's just going to be y of s. Sorry. So this part, I left this part out. So everything else is fine. Okay. So that again, y of s. That's coming. So now we have 2s squared plus 3s plus 1 now. And then we can go ahead and put everything else on the other side. So I'll go ahead and say 12 minus 4, that's going to give us 8. equals to 8 over s plus 2. Okay. Again, factor out y of s. Okay. And then we have minus, um, so minus 4 plus 12 is 8. And then we have um, 8 times s. So let me write that a little bit better here. Okay. All right, so carrying on here. So we have, let's see, y of s equals to, let's see, oh, y of s times this 2s squared 
plus 3s plus 1. equals to eight over s plus two. And then I'm gonna move this, move these over, okay. So I'll go ahead and write it this way. And okay, so eight s, so minus, we get minus eight s minus eight on the other side, which is the same as this. And then we can go ahead and factor this. So factoring this part, that's going to be 2s plus 1 times s plus 1. Okay. All right, so now we get isolating y of s. We are going to end up getting, um, we divide here. Um, let's see. So let's first, okay, let's first do this. All right, so we're going to, we're going to have eight over S plus two minus, um, I have eight times S plus one. And I want to put this under the common denominator, in this case, S plus two. So I'm gonna multiply this by S plus two. Therefore, I need to put S plus two there. Okay, then from there, we're gonna have Y of S okay, equals to, okay, I'll keep this one here. So this is going to be eight minus eight times S plus one times S plus two, all divided by S plus two. And then now we can go ahead and divide everything by two S plus one times S plus one. Okay. All right, and there we go. We have y, right? Y of s is equal to this. Okay. And so then from here, we can go ahead and apply the heavy side method again. Okay, again, so just kind of recap here. We take the Laplace of each term, apply the definition of the Laplace of the second order differential, apply the definition of the, of the Laplace of the first order differential, that's what you see here. And then basically just collect um, the Y of S terms, factor out Y of S, and then the rest of it is just algebra here. Right? All right, so let's apply the heavy side method. Okay. Again, so if we want to, um, well, let's break this up here. So we have A over, A over S plus two plus B over two S plus one, and then C over S plus one. Okay, so again, we have distinct linear factors here. Okay, so this is a this is ideal to use the heavy side method. Okay, so in order to solve for a, right, we're going to let s be equal to minus two. So that's going to give us right. So plugging s equals x equal to negative two into here, okay, we end up getting eight times, or eight minus eight times negative one times zero. 
Okay, that's plugging into here. So when S is negative two, we get minus one here and we get zero. Combine it by, again, when you, you don't want to keep the zero in the denominator here. Okay, so you ignore the other terms, okay? Um, ignore the term that where this, where this S is coming from. Okay? So putting in negative two, we're gonna get negative three times negative one. That's gonna give us eight thirds. So that's the value for, for eight. Okay. Next thing is to solve for right um, to solve for b. We do that by letting s be equal to negative one half. Um, so I'm going to go and erase this. Need some more space here. So we're going to let s be equal to minus one half. So 2s plus 1 equal to 0, solve that, you get s equal to negative 1. Okay. Plug it back into here. So that's going to be 3 halves. Okay, so plugging s equal to negative 1 half back into here. And then you want to plug it into, you want to plug s equal to negative one half into here, into here, not into this one, because that's going to give you zero at the bottom here. So we're going to get three halves times uh, one half. Okay, so that is going to give us basically two over three fourths, which ends up to be um, eight thirds. So that turns out to be B. To solve for C, we let S be equal to negative one. So plugging in minus one, you're gonna get zero here. Um, then we get one. So the bottom part, we get one times negative one. Okay, and so we're gonna end up getting basically negative eight, and that turns out to be C. So there's our coefficients. We have eight equals to eight thirds. B equals to eight thirds. And C equals to minus eight. Very good. Okay, so now, we're ready to we're ready to apply the Laplace inverse. So we have y of s equals to eight thirds over s plus two plus eight thirds over two s plus one and minus eight over s plus one. Okay, so we take the Laplace inverse of both sides. Okay, beautiful. All right. Okay, so now we have to look at this carefully here. Um, the first one, we can take out the eight thirds. Okay, so, so obviously this will become um, that result. Okay, let me fix this a little bit here. So this is going to give us our y, right, y in terms of t. So 
So taking the Laplace inverse of eight thirds over S plus two, okay, um, that is going to give us eight thirds times e to the uh, e to the minus two t. Okay. The other one. Okay, so the other one we have. Okay, we have to be a little bit. Um, we have to be a little careful of that uh, because we have we have two s plus one there. Okay, so let's do that on the side here. So let's look at this one carefully. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so the eight thirds we can take out. We have one over two S plus one. However, we can rewrite this by dividing, right? By dividing everything by two. Okay. All right, so now, um, so we have um, something that we recognize, okay? So we can take out the one half, so when we get, um, so we get basically eight thirds times one half, that's gonna leave us with four thirds there, okay? So this becomes four thirds times the Laplace inverse of one over S plus Okay. So, like I said, when doing, when taking the Laplace inverse of these, sometimes you have to kind of tinker around with it to find, to figure out um, the proper function that goes with it. So, if we get over here, okay, so we have. So that becomes. Four thirds times e to the minus one half t. Okay. Again, because it's s plus one half here. Okay. And then over here, we get minus eight times e to the negative t. And there's our um, there's our solution okay. for our initial value problem. Okay. So it's again a very very elegant technique. Actually, okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and stop here. Okay. Okay, so that is basically how you could solve um, an initial value problem uh, using using um, Laplace transforms. Okay. Um, so next time, what I'll, what we'll um, what we'll talk about is um, we'll. Basically, you could have um, not only one different equation, but you could have a collection of different equations. In other words, we could have a system of different equations. Okay, so this is um, where we get basically where we use or we apply um, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors because those are going to be invoked into our solution. Okay, so we'll um, so we'll go through the process of, the, of that, um, and then we'll look at an example. Okay. All right, so uh, I'll see, see you next time.